Today, we take it for granted that women are enrolled at universities, earning masters and PhD degrees in the sciences, but this has not been always the case. Let's go back to the beginning of the 20th century when the first female doctoral candidate was enrolled at the University of Erlangen, what is today the Friedrich Alexander Universität Erlangen Nuremberg. Her name, Dixie Lee Bryant. Follow me back into the past to learn more about Dixie Lee Bryan as one of the first women in the sciences and how she succeeded to become a role model for women scientists today. Dixie Lee Bryant was born in Louisville, Kentucky in the year 1862. She went to the Columbia Female Institute, an Episcopal school. Here, she turned out to be a real high flyer in algebra and geometry, but her true passion was geology. So it was a perfect coincidence that already renowned MIT had just launched the new degree course Geology when Dixie was in search for a degree program. In fact, she became the first female student to earn a bachelor's degree from MIT in the field of geology. After her bachelor's degree, she taught at various institutes in the US, always keeping in mind that she was paving the way for many female careers to come, always putting in the effort to motivate young women to follow her example. She was also involved in creating laboratories for young women. Despite Dixie's motivation and scientific qualifications, there were certain boundaries in the US that she was not able to overcome. One of the very few chances that she had to get a career in the sciences was actually to come to this university in Germany. But what drives a young woman to leave her home behind and start anew in terra incognita? Keep in mind that traveling back then was neither easy nor fun. Instead, it demanded for someone to leave everything behind, as Dixie Lee Bryan did. This studium in the ferne Studying abroad was very remarkable, not only because Dixie Lee Bryant had to have a sufficient knowledge about the German language in order to follow the complex geology lectures. It was not for sure that she would get enrolled at a foreign university, even in Germany, Bavaria, where women had a certain standing, they were just allowed as guest students. Nevertheless, Dixie Lee Bryant set out for the uncertain journey to Europe. Here in the archive of the Friedrich Alexander University, this long record about the start of women's studies has survived. It contains numerous application letters from women for admission, at least as guest auditors. In this record, we can also find Dixie Lee Bryant's application letter for admission, which went through several instances before she could be sure of being admitted as a guest auditor. We can only imagine how she might have felt when passing through this door, knowing that friends and family were left behind. We do know that Dixie had high hopes, but probably she never expected to be the first woman receiving a doctoral degree from this university. In Erlangen, conditions for her studies were optimal. Hans Lenk, a highly recognized scientist, had set up a group of researchers in a new institute building. This fresh start of the institute gave way to excellent scientists. Dixie was an important part of the young team where she researched the photography of Spitsbergen. In this setting, in this exact same building, Dixie did most of her work while she was at the University of Erlangen. Photographs of the early 20th century show us and give us a glimpse of the ambiente of that time. She took courses in physics, in general geology, in mineralogy, 
always together with her male colleagues, the only woman among them. From the summer of 1903 to 1904, Dixie wrote her doctoral dissertation. Under the title, Contributions to the Photography of Spitsbergen, Dixie deepened her research about the Scandinavian island in the far north. In just three semesters, Dixie completed her doctoral thesis. On all counts, this is really a very short time frame, and I bet none of us know someone that has done this so fast, as she did. And these were, in fact, very different times. When writing her request for an examination, she had to cross the word here and replace it with the word Freulein, a historical moment at that point. 1904, Dixie, Dixie returned to North Carolina in 1904 after successfully receiving her doctoral degree. Still, times were different. Even with her newly required PhD certificate, Dixie was not able to have an academic career in the US as a woman. Instead, she served as a high school teacher for more than 25 years. Dixie Lee Bryant died on November 18th 1949. Although there have been many other women who followed Dixie's example and succeeded in the sciences, it took us decades, some steps forward, even backward sometimes, in order for the women to get recognition in the sciences. Today, Dixie Lee Bryant is acknowledged as being one of the innovators and pioneers in her field. The MIT has already named after her a big lecture hall the FAU would like to name a street in the city of Erlangen after this very brave woman. <laughs>